Hi, John Brown. Thanks for the opportunity to talk to you about your exhibition, No Direct Access to Reality, at Hastings City Art Gallery. We are so glad to have it here. And I have some questions, if you can answer them. Sure. Um, first, I just um, want to know more about your exhibition, please. Um, the exhibition is called No Direct Access to Reality. Um, that is a term I've coined from a philosophy called um, Object um, Orientated philosophy Ontology. Um, it's not a comment on the philosophy itself, but it was just something that I heard that um, all things are separate, but they also relate. And I sort of thought that that was a bit of a, um, a contradiction. And um, I quite like the idea that you know, there is no direct access to reality, whether you look at it in a philosophy terms or uh, a sort of a practical way. I mean, there's no easy um, access to reality. So I coined that from a philosophy that I've been watching on YouTube, and I just thought that was a great sort of basis for an idea for a show. And that became the concept, and then the work sort of grew out of that um, organically, I suppose you could say. And what is the medium of your exhibition? Um, it's um, lots of mixed media. I've got wax. Um, I, I deal mainly in wax. I deal with mainly non-toxic um, material because I don't have a, a ventilated studio, so I use wax, plaster, uh, clay. Um, some of the other things that I have in the show that's made from silicon, um, plastics and stuff like that, I've made those in um, another environment where I have great ventilation because they're very toxic. So. And I've also got a few paperworks um, and also um, a big sculpture made out of Rimu and terracotta pot, which is like a found object. Okay, that's great. Once you said working in museum has influenced your work. Can you explain how? Well, I mean, we all have influences, I suppose. I don't have... I look at lots of artists, I look at lots of different work, um, painting, um, craft, sculpture. Um, printmaking, lots of different work by many different artists, but the actual work itself doesn't influence me. What influences me is what I'm doing at the time, um, whether I'm working in a museum, um, uh, working in a prop shop, making stuff for films and stuff, those sorts of things influence the way I feel through materials, medium, um, stuff like that. Um, so. Um, yeah, so my influence for the show for this piece here, for instance, um, that influence, I was influenced by working at a museum for that because I was interested in the way that they display objects and they describe a narrative for these objects. So, you know, they could um, exhibit a piece of stone or a brick that's fallen off a building, and to the naked eye, it means nothing, but they have a big narrative there so explaining this is the brick that comes from the first building there. Uh, fell over in the quake or something like that. So I was quite interested in when you bring an object into a museum or a gallery, the different contexts that that object holds and the weight that it's given. Um, because it's in a place like this, um, and that they have lots of big narrative description of that. I've chosen not to have a narrative for my work. Um, the title, which is um, I'm over here where you can't find me, suggests a little um, narrative, but it's it's only a means for the viewer to enter the work, not uh, sort of a fully understanding of the, the work. Mm -hmm. That's great. Um, we know about the relationship between human and objects, and how human humans construct identity through objects. What I see in your work is that part of human body turn to objects, such as teeth or skin. Somehow, human becomes the object, as I see in your works. How do you see that relationship? Mm, good question. Um, yeah, I don't really see that I've turned human body parts into objects. What I suppose I'm trying to do is, I like the discussion that the work has with the viewer, so um, I try to direct that discussion, that sort of viewing, I suppose, in a sort of humanistic way. Um, so I want people to look at the work and not think about, oh, that looks like a, a brick or a stone or something, but hey, that stone's got human qualities. You know, 
it must be. And then suddenly when they think about that work or they think about the relation between the object and them, the sort of the unreal, the unknown sort of um, connection becomes a sort of a human connection um, where they might think about some of their own sort of um, personal um, narratives or ideas. So I use a human sort of, um, you know, anthropomorphic type objects to, um, I suppose for the viewer to have a bit more empathy when they're looking at the work and relate it to their own experiences rather than a sort of an experience that's just separate from their own sort of ideas. Okay, um, my other question is that, um, why did you choose John Brown as your artistic name? Another good question, uh -huh. um, So that's a bit of a f that's a bit of a faux pas on my behalf, I suppose, because um, my name's Jonathan Brown. Um, my dad's name's John Brown. Uh, apparently, he wanted to name all my brothers John Brown. Uh, he'd like to get John in there somehow. Um, and when I came to designing a website, um, as like with John designing a website or getting an email name, it's very hard to get Jonathan Brown, all those names taken in, Jonathan Brown, one, two, four, or anything like that, they were all taken up. So when I was doing my website, John Brown was available, which was very um, uncommon to me, because John Brown usually goes first before Jonathan Brown. Um, and I sort of thought, well, I didn't want to call my website something that didn't relate to my name. Um, I couldn't name it Brown or anything, so I, took on the name John Brown as my artist name, but not my artist persona, but um, I thought that they had to tie me into the workshop. So it has become quite confusing because people that know me as Jonathan uh, see my work as John and think I'm a different person, but I don't actually think Jonathan and John is too far apart, so, um, you know, it's a bit of a tricky situation. Um, my mother's always like Jonathan, but I quite like John, and I quite like the fact that it's kind of miniature dad, so I think that's why I've adopted that. Uh, my email is Biddles Brown, that's my partner and my name together, so you know, when you've got a name like Brown, Smith yeah. and Jones, it's very hard to yes. get what you want. Yeah. Talking about names, I really like to know who are the artists that have influenced your practice? Well, I do a lot of work that I say maps my um, my journey, my human existence, um, that, you know, it's kind of a sort of a, a notion of the portrait, I suppose. So Franz Appelman um, is a, an art, a painter that maps, makes mental maps of places and things that he's been. So I've always very enjoyed his work. I love his flat colour and his extensive bright colours. Um, this woman, uh, Belinda de Bruckier, I'm not sure if that's the correct way to pronounce her name, she uh, is an artist that I've always liked um, and I was lucky enough to see her work in the Pope's Palace in, Fr in Avignon, France and she makes beautiful wax works that are very um, anthropomorphic and when I saw her work um, that's when I started using wax because I realised wax is such a, 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 a much more it's a humanistic medium and I could get those sort of um, translucent skin colours and things like that. So she's influenced my work only in materials, I say, because her work's, her work's fantastic, I love her work, but it's, um, to make that work is a bit sort of unrealistic for me in my conditions, um, was in, you know, money and studio frame-wise. Um, I like a lot of, I just, there's so many artists that I like, I just, it's hard to, to pinpoint, you know, which is my favourite ones. But I do try not to look at too many artists and their work when I'm in my early stages of coming up with a concept, or an idea, because I think that it influences me too much and I really, um, I really struggle to make my own sort of work. So, you know, once I'm on the go, then I can open back up to more sort of outside influences. But, you know, mainly, um, you know, well, I just, I can't remember any other artists on the brain. I should have prepared for that question. <laughs> it's all right, thank you. Um, we have another question about your paperwork. Shall we move down there and oh, ask sure. about it? Um, we see your beautiful paperwork in the background. Um, I remember that in your floor talk, you said you don't consider your paperwork as 
2D works. So there are kind of 3D works. How do you explain it? Oh, I don't mean that they're 3D works. I just mean that um, that a painting is still an object. Um, you know, even if it's a, a painting that has been installed on a wall that's painted on the space, I still see that whole wall as an object. Um, I suppose that's a bit more, but I've painted some performance as well. Uh, what I meant to say was, um, you know, um, I've done a lot of paintings in the past, um, and when I started making objects, uh, working for movies, making props, I really fell in love with the idea of making, I always made stuff when I was young, you know, from models to little, um, you know, little intricate things and stuff like that. But um, the painting process for me became a little bit sort of boring, and not boring, but um, it's just something that I couldn't really stick at anymore. But in the, in the earlier days, I could paint for weeks and months on end, and it was very exciting to me. Um, what I say is that, um, you know, I put the paper through a long process. Um, I was originally a printmaker, so process is quite an intrinsic part of my uh, making. Um, and with these works, I put them through a long process of putting a wash on the back and I roll it through, I roll it through, I turn it over, I roll it, I keep doing that. I do that probably for a few days, I do that hundreds and hundreds of times. So what I have on the back is totally different from what has actually come on the front. Um, and I kind of like that process that I made because it, the paper had become so um, fragile and so thin and I was actually holding it as an object rather than just working on it like a paper. It was something that the, it was a performance, it was a, an object that was in, 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 integral in the performance. Um, and it became so frail and stuff like I thought it was like a piece of skin and you know it has dents in it from rolling it and it has like little wraps. It's actually not square anymore because I'd rolled it so much. So I actually treated it more like an object, more than I treated a uh, painting that I used to do in the past. So that's kind of what I meant by um, the painting I consider it an object. It's a piece of paper, a piece of paper is an object anyway. Even though it's 2D, it's still an object. That's an excellent answer. Thank you so much for your time, John, and we look forward to see more of your creative works. Excellent. Thank you very much, Alham.